All right. So, hey guys. This is the main menu you're going to start in when you first start the game. Um, I guess let me show the first person real quick. This is a basic level playlist thing. By the way, sorry if the mic is uh, clipping or anything. It's just a Vive mic. I don't have any fancy mics to do this. but So you can set whatever level you want to play in any order. As of right now, though, it doesn't show the, the scores afterwards yet. So it's sort of iffy on that. There we go. But yeah, once you have levels put in, you can just start it by pressing start. But this video is going to be about the level editor, which is right here. You just uh, hit it to start. Alright, so this is the editor. You move around by just pressing grip buttons and moving your controllers. If you hold both of them, you can scale yourself. So now this is tiny. It looks pretty weird in first person, but it's pretty nice in practice. Alright, so menu button opens up this menu. But you can load levels you've made before or save them. Um, and it also has the upload to workshop uh, thing. And there's a playtest button. And but you can't playtest without you can't press these without holding the trigger. So you have to hold the trigger, then you can touch them. That's so you can't accidentally press the wrong buttons. Um, you can't playtest without having something underneath this, at least five meters underneath this anyway, because uh, you can't open a menu while you're in midair, so you're, you'd just be infinitely falling if you could. Um, yeah, so let me just, I still need to adjust the scale on this. Scale is not really cooperating here, but... <clears throat> You can see I can just move my my thumb on the touchpad and it'll rotate between all the selectable objects. And really the colors is what you're going to have to look for. I, I think I'm going to have some sort of like a text thing that displays whatever block it is, but it's relatively clear from just uh, looking at it. If you press on the touchpad, it's going to spawn a block, which is snapped in 0.1 increments. So 10 centimeters in increments, I think. And so is the scaling. But you can place them pretty much anywhere. There's still a few tiny bugs with when stuff is selected and when it isn't. But it's uh, very usable. And there's these rotation arrows which rotate in 22.5 degree increments which gives you a nice level of control without being too like strict about it. Um, yeah, you can just create a level, put down a block right there. You can also snap this guy to whatever surface is underneath it by just pressing the grip buttons whenever you, or a grip button whenever you hold it. It's nice. And yeah, so you have this block Ice block, regular old grabbable block. Uh, right, so if you press the grip button, it also deselects it. Um, there's the movable block, which is kind of complex to do, but it totally works. Because, right, I forgot. Um, if you have something selected and you press the menu button, you get this menu, which is... Uh, specific to whatever block you have selected. In this case, it's just basic delete, duplicate, and close. Duplicate creates a literal duplicate of it, which is nice for if you've got a certain scale set and you want more of those. And uh, delete is just delete, you know, it's pretty straightforward. You can also like manipulate them from afar, which is kind of nice. You don't need to hold it really 
Um, right, so this one has a different menu. It's a little more complex. Arrival time is uh, how long between each point it needs to take. Basically, if this is non-zero, it'll go at a constant speed. Oh, wait, it'll go at a speed relative to how long it would take to go between two distances. It's pretty complex, but if you just want a constant speed, you set this to zero and set the speed to whatever. And that'll just always go that speed. The arrival time is more for uh, syncing two separate uh, moving platforms. Wait for player is uh, makes it wait until there's a player on top of it until it starts moving. And then when the player jumps off it at the end, it will go back. If the player stays on it, it'll just stop at the end. And ping pong, well, that's just going back and forth instead of following the full circle. And add waypoint. So that's the first waypoint. And then select it again. Add another waypoint. This is currently pretty broken, but it should show a line between them. Might happen once I, yeah, add a third one. It shows which direction it goes depending on if ping pong is enabled. See if I enable ping pong, it's gonna go back at the end. If I don't, it's gonna go back to the first one. It's uh, not an easy system to use, but it's pretty cool once you've got a hang of it. And there's just a separate button for removing the waypoints. And it just selects one as soon as you create it. Huh, seems to work now. So that's good. Um, and also only shows that line if you've got a waypoint selected in the group. I might still need to color code those depending on uh, what platform you have selected so that it's more clear which one's which, but I think it's relatively straightforward now. And duplicate creates a duplicate of that and gives it, uh, makes it use the same waypoints as you can see from selecting it. It's pretty cool, right? Delete. That's another bug. It doesn't actually know those waypoints are gone, so I think this is broken now. <laughs> yeah. Well, bugs, you know, early access and all that. I'll figure that out. Um, so this is a zero gravity field. Whenever the player is inside this, there is no gravity on the player, so we can just float around. And if he floats around for, I think, two seconds without standing on something or moving fast enough, it'll respawn at the last checkpoint. It's sort of interesting behavior you're going to have to check out to really understand, I guess. And let's see, there's a trampoline, which is an interesting one. It's uh, pretty nice. I mean, it's still kind of buggy because I just haven't gotten around to making it flawless yet. If I ever get to that. <laughs> Trampolines are pretty tricky. But yeah, some people were saying maybe add some air control by moving your controllers or whatever. I don't know about yet, that yet, but I'll see. Um, What else is there? I think that's all the blocks covered for now. I mean, these are six blocks. I can still add more to this. There's That's no issue at all. So I built this system so they're expandable and I can easily add new blocks. Right, so once you've got your level designed, let me just throw something together real quick that's actually finishable. Um, Should be interesting, maybe. And since it all snaps and shows the grid on it, so it's it's pretty easy to line up exactly at the center of it. This one's not exactly centered. Now it is. And now this one. I guess that's centered. And this can be centered too. There we go. 
and it's a pretty labor intensive process still i don't know there's a lot of shortcuts i can take here so um right probably put the flag somewhere more logical like here you can also move it and see the flag wobble it's fun um yeah i think that's about it there's no limit to how big you can make these by the way it's just an infinite plane of possibilities i guess and you can make it tiny you can still walk out you can walk around it and then you know still grab things just fine i mean it gets a little harder because they're so tiny but and also i don't scale the menu yet so it's really small right now i still have to fix that but that's not a huge issue you can just make yourself smaller again and it'll look fine so let me just save it real quick all right for me it opened the uh the steam overlay uh input thing so i'm just using the native steam vr for doing it let's see tutorial space level not even sure if it takes spaces let's see done now it's got it saved uh, i can see it if i press load it's uh there T tutorial level wow i really messed that up anyway i can press play test and play um something went wrong shit well i guess that's the tutorial yay i'm not sure what happened here so i'm gonna have to check that figure it out uh let me cut here <laughs> Righto. So what happened was I messed up. I'm pretty sure it was the spacebar in the name. Let's retry that. I rebuilt the level because it didn't save it. So I'm going to have to filter out the spacebar before I release. I can do that. Save. All right, let's see. Technically, that should work, so let's see if that worked. Playtest. Yeah, dash worked. So, it just, uh, this is what should happen, what is gonna happen when you actually get the game. Um, see if I can finish this. Oh, yeah, I can, totally. So, as you can see, this is zero gravity. And because I just moved down, it's going to keep moving down and I fall out. Right, so you can do some pretty interesting stuff with this, I think. Um, the zero gravity stuff is not very well tested yet, but so far I've not encountered any, encountered any diff uh, difficulties with it. If you just hit it, it's going to throw you back into the editor. And it saves every time you press play test, so. but it also saves if you hit save, of course. Renaming is currently not supported, but I'm probably going to put in a, a save as button or something. It's going to let you rename it and save it as something else. But yeah, as I said, this uh, is still very whip work in progress. So, um, you know, I'm looking forward to getting some feedback on this because I've really not gotten any so far. <laughs> no one's really tried it yet. Should be interesting. Um, and you just hit main menu and you get put back here with the camera. So, uh, I guess that's the video. Later, folks. And uh, release tomorrow. Not to date it, but. Bye.